So you got a Poisson question, but no time to do it by hand. That's fine, because I'm going to show you how to do it on the TI Inspire. So stick with me, and we're going to go ahead and walk through all the steps on how to do Poisson distribution probability questions on your TI Inspire. Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni and this is Probability and Statistics. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a Poisson distribution probability question on your TI Inspire. Now I'm going to walk you through the three different ways that you can actually get to using that along with how to use the two different types, PDF versus CDF. So with that, let's just go dive right into actually using this calculator. First off, how do we actually get to the Poisson distribution function in our calculator? Well, if you're on the home screen like I am right now, then you can go ahead and either choose calculator in the scratch pad with this guy right here, or you can go ahead and open a new document, which I usually do for the actual calculator function of the TI Inspire. So we're gonna go ahead and open that new document and we're gonna find the Poisson distribution in our menu. Now, I'm a big fan of not really giving just like the numbers you can do, like go to menu and then 554, because every time you update your TI Inspire, there's a chance that it's gonna change the order or how many things are in your menu. So it's better to learn it based off of what the actual words are. And in this case, there's actually two different places in our menu that allow us to get to a Poisson distribution question. The first one is going to be the fifth one in mine, which is probability. So you wanna find probability in your menu and go ahead into that submenu, and then go ahead and go down to distributions. Distributions is where you want to be. And this lists all the possible distributions that your calculator can handle. And the very last one at the bottom is going to be Poisson, PDF, and CDF. Now, if I did not want to go through this way, there is a second place that I can actually find this in our calculator, and that's through statistics. So you can go to probability or you can go to statistics at that first menu. And you'll notice that distributions is listed here as well. And just the same, we can go down to the very bottom and see Poisson, PDF, and CDF. Now for this first question we have here, my school has an average of four snow days a year. What's the probability that next year it will have five? This is going to be a PDF question. And here's the difference between the two. What you're finding the probability of, that's a officially your x in the problem, it's either going to be a number or a range of numbers. So in this case, it says, what's the probability that next year it will have five? So five snow days. Five is only one number. And for that reason, we're going to use PDF. Anytime the question is asking for a one number for x, it's a PDF in our calculator. Anytime it's asking for a range of numbers, that's when we're going to use CDF. So for example, it said, what's the probability that next year there will be seven or more or three or less or somewhere between two and eight all of those would fall in the cdf category but if it only has one number then we use the pdf so let's go ahead and start with that one now so as you can see here it only asks for two things it asks for a lambda and an x value now, a lot of times people are not familiar with this lambda symbol, but this is actually the calculator's way of asking you for the mean that was given or the average that was given in the problem. So in this case, that average was four. Four snow days was the average from previous years. From there, the X value we've already talked about is going to be five in this case for us. So once I put in the four and five, that's pretty much it. You can go down and hit okay. And it tells you that your answer is 0.156293. So in other words, there's about a 15 to 16% chance that the next year will have five snow days instead of that average of four. So with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the CDF version of this calculator. Our next question is using the same situation. The only difference here is I've replaced that exactly five with three or less snow days. And that means that we're going to be shifting from one X value to a range of X values. So that means we're going to be using that CDF function instead. So I go ahead into statistics and I'm going to go down to distributions and again, scroll all the way to the bottom of the list to see my Poisson 
CDF for this time since it's going to be a range of numbers. And it still asks the first thing of that lambda. So again, we're going to put in four because that's still the average in our situation. But then it asks for a lower bound and an upper bound. So remember, for PDF, it was exactly one number. But for the CDF, it's a range of numbers. So what they want here is the lower end of that range and the upper end of that range. So in this case, if I have three or less, well, the smallest number of snow days I could have would be zero. And the highest number of snow days then would be three because I'm trying to define three or less. So that means I'd be going from zero to three. And that's just setting the boundaries of what we want. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay and see that the answer to that question would be 0.43347. In other words, there's about a 43% chance that you would have three or less snow days if the average was usually four. For our last example, I'm actually going to show you two other things with the TI Inspire when using a Poisson distribution. Number one is you can actually do this without using the menu at all. If you know what the little coding is for it, you don't need to go through the menu, you can just type it in. So we've already seen above that the coding for this is actually POIS and then either PDF or CDF. So if I type that in, POIS, and then put a CDF, you'll notice that the moment I typed an F, it went from being an italicized word to being just a normal font. That means the calculator has recognized that you plugged in a function that it is capable of doing. So then I'm gonna go ahead and open my parentheses and plug in the numbers that we know it needs. So the first one was the four, which was the lambda, and that hasn't changed, so we're gonna keep that as our four. Then I'm gonna put a comma, which can be found in the bottom left-hand corner of your calculator, and that's going to separate each of the inputs that I'm putting into this function. And I'm going to have to do my lower bound and then upper bound. Now, remember, it says here that it's more than four. So we've changed the question. So what's the first number that's more than four? Five. So I'm going to put five as my lower bound because that's the lowest I can go for this question. But here's where the second thing I need to mention comes into play. We don't really have an upper bound. It kind of goes off into infinity. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my comma in, but how do I type in infinity? Well, it turns out that if you put a number in large enough so that if it's like really, really big and far away from the four, then the probability of that number of snow days happening is essentially zero. So as long as we put a big enough number in, then we don't have to worry about finding an infinity symbol because we've essentially done that by finding a number far enough away that the probability of anything happening past that would just be zero anyway. If all that doesn't make sense, don't worry. The way that I always do this without fail is usually just plug in five nines as my upper bound. One, two, three, four, five. And that actually will be a large enough number almost all of the time that it will represent infinity for you. Now, if you're dealing with something that has an average that's super, super high, then that may not work for you and you may have to put in more nines to get far enough away from that mean. But that would be an extremely rare situation and someone that made a question that literally was just to make it tough on you. So in general, if you ever need to use in infinity in the TI Inspire, it's usually just as good to use a bunch of nines, or if you're going to negative infinity, just use a bunch of nines after a negative sign. And that will be the, pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and close up my parentheses there, hit enter, and you will see that probability is going to be 0.371163. In other words, there's about a 37% chance that we will have more than four snow days if our average is usually four. Now, if you've made it this far, go ahead and hit that like button below to help me know that this content was useful for you. And that way I can make more videos like this in the future. With that said, though, we have covered everything to do with Poisson distributions in the TI Inspire. If you have any other questions with it, feel free to leave it in the comments below and I'll try to help you out to the best of my ability. But with that said, guys, remember, if you want to keep getting videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. My name is Daniel Caproni and this has been Probability and Statistics.